Have you ever created page numbers by hand, added them one by one, page by page, and then someone, someone decides to add a page somewhere at the beginning of the document and you can start all over again. Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be working with automated page numbers in InDesign because doing them by hand is just so time consuming and not worth the suffering. Luckily there's a feature in InDesign that counts the pages for you, all while you remain fully in control of the styling and placement of the page numbers. And with a little help of the master pages, your page numbers will be exactly the same on every page. Well, not exactly the same, I mean there will be different numbers, but the styling and placement will be identical on every page. This tutorial is beginner level, so you do need some fundamental InDesign skills like adding a text field or changing a font, and it does help if you know what a master page is. If you don't know what a master page is, that's all right, you can just follow along. But if you're interested to learn more about master pages, be sure to check out this video where we dive in deeper on the master pages topic. In this tutorial, first we're going to make it work. We're going to make sure the right numbers appear on the right pages. And then we're going to be looking at some styling. And in the end, we're going to be doing some troubleshooting to tackle the most common problems you may run into when working with page numbers. So by the end of this video, you will be fully in control of your automated page numbers. I'm Boris from bobodarling.com and I've been working as a graphic designer for over a decade. And now I make videos to help you take your design work to the next level. So if that's something you're interested in, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post weekly new videos. Now let's go create some automated page numbers in InDesign. All right, here we are inside InDesign. Now to get started, I have this document right here. Uh, this is a little dummy book. You can get this document at the blog post on bubblediling.com. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below so you can uh, go ahead and grab that. You don't need it to follow along uh, with the tutorial, but I do encourage you to go ahead and download this document so you can see exactly what I've done in this uh, tutorial. Now my example is laid out in spreads, meaning that the pages are laid out next to each other. Uh, automated page numbers work exactly the same on single page layouts, but the spread layout gives a little more flexibility when it comes to positioning the page numbers. So that's why I'm using that in this example. Now, if you got started on a single page layout and you wanna change that back to the spread layout like I have here, you can just go in and go to file and document setup. And there you find this checkbox saying facing pages. If you check that, then the pages are laid out next to each other if you want to make a change. Now, like I just mentioned, uh, we'll, we will be working in the master page. So to work in the master pages, first we need to open the pages window. That, um, so we go up in the top menu and we go to uh, window and then pages. And there we have it. I have mine already open right here. So here we have all the pages of the document and on the top here we see the master pages and we have one master page called a master. To work in the master page, uh, what you need to do is just double click on the master page up here. Here we are going to draw a text field and with the type tool and then type a number in there. Right now it would say on every page the same number, this eight. So we're going to replace that with a special character that is a placeholder for the pa current page number. So we select this number and then we go in the top menu, we go to type, then insert special character, markers, and then current page number. It's quite a long path, let me repeat that. So type, insert special character, markers, and then current page number. And now we see that the eight is changed into an A. And this A is actually a placeholder for your page number. So if we go to the actual pages by double clicking on the page that we want to look at, there we see the pages are all numbered according to their own page number. And the best part is if I change the order of the pages, the page numbers will change automatically. Let me show you. The page with the box is page number three, like you see here. And now if I drag it down here to page five, ta-da! <laughs> now the page number has also changed to the five. So that gives a lot of flexibility when it comes to ordering the pages, moving them around, uh, removing, adding, anything you wanna do really. So it's very, uh, very hand handy. It's a very nifty tool. Well, right now only the right pages have a page number. So let's go back into the master 
um, and I give the left page a page number as well. So we just duplicate the marker and and just drag it to the other side of the to the other page, and that will it will sh it will show the same. It, it's also the A because it's still in the A master, but um, it will show the current page number, of course, because that's what it's for. Now that's how we get the correct page numbers on every single page of your document. Now when it comes to the styling of your page numbers, you can literally do anything you like. Essentially it works exactly like any regular character. So you can play with the size, the colors, the placement, anything you can do with a regular character you can do with the page number as well. I collected a couple of creative ways of using page numbers and I put them with the blog post. It's, uh, you find it on bobodarling.com, I'll put the link in the description. So go check that out and see if you find something that is inspiring for you to use in your document. Now one issue that you may run into is that your page number is going to be covered by some artwork that you put on top of it, while actually you meant to put the number on top of the artwork. Now there is a way to work around this and let me show you right now. Here we have the pages with the page number on them, but now we want to add an image or an object on the bottom half of the page, like this. So right now the object is covering the page number and we're going to fix this with the layers window. So first we go up here to windows and then layers. And here we see that we have one layer in this document. And when we go into the master page, we see that the page numbers are placed on this layer. Okay, so now we go back to the page and we're just gonna create a new layer and then simply drag that layer below the layer with the page numbers on them. And now just transfer the object to that new layer and the page numbers will show on top of that object. So that's how you do this. So as I'm editing this video, I realize I have way too much to say about page numbers. So rather than turning this into a 20 minute video, I'm gonna make a part two where we talk more about page numbers. It's gonna be about how to uh, skip the first few pages so you can use the first, uh, first page of your document as the cover and also about uh, the Roman notation to use that as your page numbering. So when the four is an I and a V. So that's some very exciting stuff, I think. So be sure to stick around for that. Um, in the meantime, be sure to check out the blog post where I collected all kinds of different ways to style your page numbering. And um, yeah, I hope it was helpful. If it was, give it a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below. And uh, until then, I will see you in the next video.